Hello everyone, welcome back to Wolfer Programming. Today I want to talk about something a little bit different than what I've been talking about recently on my channel. And that is a media center application that's highly programmable called Kodi, and specifically a tool to control it, namely IR remotes. So it's really funny, IR remotes, it's a very simple technology, um, but it's extremely effective and it works so well that really the industry has failed, even though it's tried many times, to replace it for decades. Um, I mean, I know LG TVs come with that sort of wand. Uh, there's a lot of Bluetooth stuff going on, like old Wiimotes 10 years ago. Um, PlayStation 3 remote had Bluetooth, I think. A lot of remotes use some combination of Wi-Fi and Bluetooth to kind of do more stuff with uh, mouse pointers, but in my opinion, um, just like 3.5 millimeter headphones, there is just nothing that can beat plain old <clears throat> infrared remote uh, senders and receivers. So if you're setting up a media center, um, there's many ways to do it. There's a lot of Android boxes that are really popular these days, um, but if you're a computer programmer and you're into IT stuff, there's a good chance that you probably have a Raspberry Pi 4. I know there's a electronic shortage going on right now and and these things make great media centers now it's not it doesn't play every media file out there but it plays 4k 60 frames per second h.265 video formats which is like you know basically the latest and greatest it does software decode of h.264 which is basically the uh, the format that blu-rays came in and it does that fine up to 1080p now at 4k you want to use a newer encoding that's not really what I want to make this video about because, well, you can find devices that uh, that can decode uh, H.264 or 4K and install Kodi on them and it'll work fine. The Raspberry Pi 4 doesn't, but it is my favorite device. It's very low powered. It's kind of universal. There's lots of different software for it, um, lots of different options, lots of support. Okay, so on to the meat of this episode of Wolf Word Programming. I found a couple different a couple different ways to control Kodi with infrared. So over here in the old school section, we have uh, <laughs> you know really the, the the OG IR remote for computers. It was it was originally made for Windows Media Center, which <clears throat> back in the day, I think the Vista days, uh, there was uh, a small kind of race to create uh, media centers, and <clears throat> like the TiVo era and stuff. And Windows had a go at it. Um, even Mac OS X had a go at it. And so Windows had made a remote, um, and this is uh, HP's version of it. Um, and this is a Microsoft remote. So these things generally work out of the box on most computers, on Windows, on Linux, on Raspberry Pi, probably Android boxes. I haven't given them a go. I think the drivers are in the Linux kernel, and it's certainly on a very old Linux kernel, so that should work. And, and this is a fine remote. This IR, the USB cable to this thing is absurdly long. It's funny, I actually found this in a Goodwill. God, it must have been eight, nine years ago now. I couldn't believe I found both the IR receiver and the remote. I was just browsing. I used to, <clears throat> in college, I would browse thrift stores for you know computer parts, hoping that I could find something good. I could never afford stuff myself um and this works fine it's it's kind of boring i don't like the this gigantic infrared receiver like why does it have to be so gargantuan i mean it's it's made i think it's even got some plugs so it can like output stuff i, I don't even know what those are used for like i said i got this in a thrift store it works fine with cody but there's a couple other interesting alternatives you might consider now this is this is actually my favorite remote so if you've used Kodi, in, in the past, Kodi was actually called XBMC, which stood for Xbox Media Center. And that's because it was, a, the, the, it was founded on hacked Xboxes. So if, if you did not know, back before the term jail, jailbreak was a thing, um, there was a homebrew scene, a very big one, on the original Xbox because <clears throat> it was just a, a computer in a box, really. Low RAM, but it was a Pentium 3. <clears throat> just like a Pentium 3 computer, and it was cheaper than a Pentium 3 computer at the time. And so uh, there was a there was a popular software hack 
The one I used back in the day was on a game called Splinter Cell. You'd pop the game in, you do a couple weird things, and next thing you know, you can install whatever software you want. And one of the most popular software choices was Kodi. So that's one of the reasons, maybe the nostalgic factor. I love this remote. Uh, it was uh, one of the things I really like about this remote. Notice that when you put your thumb on it, it goes straight to the arrow keys, straight to the arrow keys. And the HP remote actually does this pretty well too, um, but it's so long that maybe it goes to the numbers instead. And actually, it's kind of heavy in the back where the batteries are, so your thumbs don't kind of instinctively go there. However, with the Xbox, original Xbox remote, not the 360 remote, um, your fingers go right to this. And in a media center, you do a lot of browsing. I'll try to get a clip at the end of the video of Cody running. So you kind of have an idea of what I'm talking about if you're not familiar with Cody. It's a media center. It's um, where you can play your movies. So a lot of you know content that you might have gotten on the high seas or um, perhaps you got yourself from what you own, which actually I do. Um, or there's actually lots of legal content to, to be found on it too. Anyway, notice that you know the, the, the center of gravity go, brings your thumb right to the center. And in a media center, you do a lot more browsing than, for example, pressing the play button. You're, you're spending a lot of time actually pressing up, pressing left, pressing right. And so this is really a great position for a media center, media center remote. The numbers aren't used very much. Uh, you can use them to like skip around in video positions. I doubt anyone really <laughs> makes good use of that. Uh, so, but they're nice to have. Um, uh, when you're, especially when you're, when you're type, if you can use them as letters like a quirky keyboard where this has like three choices, you can actually type pretty quick if you're searching stuff up. But the play is also very reachable. The home button is like display, I think, yeah, and then the back and menu. These are all all very useful buttons. It's it's very simple. It's very intuitive. I love this remote. And the interesting thing about this remote is I found this in a used game store <clears throat> for five dollars, mint condition. I mean, it's probably 15 years or older now. I don't know. And the IR receiver also mint condition. And so this was $5. And while you could wire this to a USB cable yourself, years ago I did that. Um, it's easier to just buy these things off of Amazon. This was $11, so twice the cost of the actual remote. But we're still under $20. And this, the, the thing about this remote is it won't work out of the box on anything it does work on Libre Elect, which is what I have installed on my Raspberry Pi on my TV. So you gotta do, to get it to work, you gotta do some, some configurations. I've actually never been able to get it to work myself, but it involves blacklisting something on the Xbox driver, maybe. I actually don't know how the Libre Elect guys uh, got it to work, but on Libre Elect, which is just enough OS for Kodi, it's a very minimal Linux distribution, with Kodi running, it works out of the box, and I love this remote. It has got to be my favorite remote. So this is a great option, and also any almost any universal remote you buy will probably have a Microsoft section, and this one will be one of those numbers. So I actually have a, uh, a remote next to my TV that's wired for my Samsung TV and this remote, so I don't have to use this. Um, it's fun to use, um, but I can also use a universal remote. Almost any universal, cheap universal remote will have codes for it. <coughs> it's a great remote. It's my favorite remote. I can't say enough good things about it. $5, you can find it in used game stores. But I would only suggest buying this remote if you're going with just Libre Elect. So, or maybe any, any derivative base on it. I know there's a few new operating systems similar to it. Okay, so now here's a, here's a, here's a little bit of a more interesting option. So this is a, you, you probably recognize this from, you know, deep in your past. This is the PlayStation 2 remote. So similar era as the Xbox remote. Uh, this remote, your fingers don't really go to the arrows there much. And it was, a, it was a DVD remote. Now remember, the PlayStation 2 was like the, one of the, if not the first DVD player, right? So in those days, um, DVDs were, you, you know, we were just coming from VHS days, right? So in a VHS, you just pop it in and press the play button. So in DVD, we did have menus <coughs> and a couple options. So they did include the arrows. And remember, this was by Sony, so they make a lot of stereo systems. So they have all the musical options here. So the arrow keys going up, down, left, right, they're pretty small because in those days, 
you didn't they didn't really expect you to be doing a whole lot of browsing a whole lot of media browsing with the with the keys right um, and that, that was typical of remotes in that day so but they did have the PlayStation buttons and you know I have this set I'll, I'll talk about how I set that later but um, you know you can have these buttons do different things in your Kodi or uh, yeah in your media center and uh, it's it's a very nice remote and it's very cheap I actually got this brand new supposedly brand new shipped from China on Amazon for an absurdly low price it was like seven dollars however to use a PlayStation remote you need an IR receiver so you can of course you can't use that with the Xbox IR receiver and um, you're not going to be able to use that with a Microsoft IR receiver so you need another option <coughs> now if you're really clever you could you know go into the J you know the GPIO pins here wire up a IR receiver yourself and program it yourself that's something I would like to do one day um, you can I have had that thing work before um, it's been several years I think on the Raspberry Pi one or two but um, an easier option is just to buy what's called an FLIRC dongle and some guy I think out in California makes these and it's 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 actually really really cool so it's got a little IR receiver in there hidden away in this nice little aluminum enclosure to make it feel like it's high quality it probably isn't if you open it in there it's probably just like two little pins um, like the kind you can order for Raspberry Pis but uh, this little guy here it's got a tiny little arm processor in it you insert into your USB port you download the C++ program which uh, he offers on his website and uh, it will actually offer you a menu which you can take a look at I don't think it's uh, super valuable to throw that in this video but uh, you can basically program all the buttons for Kodi or for other things to any IR remote now they say I say any IR remote but it actually doesn't work with the Microsoft remote because this uses some sort of different frequency I saw some guy write about it online so you'd have to uh, program specifically for this remote and I guess the guy who made this device didn't think that was worth it but um, so it actually won't work for this that's why I'm using the original IR receiver with a USB dongle instead of the FLRAC dongle so anyway you can just then basically point it at the IR remote when you're running the program press a button and it will record it for you this remote works perfect with FLRIC almost any remote will work with it this is about twenty dollars on Amazon kind of an expensive option and really just kind of for that geek factor but it works really well so if you want that nostalgia of the PlayStation maybe you didn't have an Xbox maybe you just like PlayStation uh, this is a great option and also because this is an old remote it will be in many IR remote codes so if you buy a cheap universal remote for eight bucks at Walmart and you record the buttons for this um, you'll be able to use a, any any uni, any universal remote with this IR receiver from within Kodi. So I thought that I'd also do a, an honorable mention. If you're not a big fan of IR remotes and you want to do something called like the future, this is like um, some sort of other protocol. It's not um, it's not IR. It's more like I guess it's similar to Bluetooth and. These things are kind of made for Android devices and Kodi. You can pick them up at your Micro Center on on Amazon. There's various versions of it. This is kind of an older model. I think they got a newer, but they're all basically the same thing. And all these media keys are pre-programmed. You can't really reprogram them. These buttons you actually can program. It does have an IR blaster on it. And so like one thing you can do is you can program this button to turn the TV on and off you can use this button to program for example to change the input and then maybe these two to control the volume of the TV which is what I had it set up originally and that gave me the ability to use just this remote um, without having to reach for my TV remote I could get it to Kodi and I could change the volume I would really like to have these volume keys mapped to my TV's volume so um, this is not an IR remote it's a, a newer technology and in my opinion not really is good the cool thing is it does have a keyboard uh, it kind of still feels like it needs line of sight and it's got kind of a mouse built in but it's not perfect and because it's not perfect it's infuriating to use so it uh it, it just it just doesn't feel as good as a real mouse if you needed one if you needed a mouse pointer like you absolutely needed it 
this would be a good option. Um, I don't suggest it. I would say stick to IR remotes. If you're going to be watching something on the TV, you don't want to use a mouse. You want to use a 10-foot interface. Um, but yeah, uh, that's that. I'll leave you a little video of me using one of these remotes at Cody in the end. Um, but uh, that's all I got for you guys today. Let me know if you're interested in any videos about Cody. Um, we could go through making a Cody add-on. They use Python, uh, Python 3 now with the latest Cody 19. I've not done that myself, but we could take a look at how to do that. So there's no reason you couldn't make a Cody add-on to say, pull an API of a website and browse stuff. Let me know if anyone's interested in that. That's something we could take a look at. It's not something that's going to get you a job, but it's kind of fun to do. Uh, so don't forget, that's all I got for Wolf War Programming today, right now. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Hit the notification bell. Leave a comment down below. It helps in the algorithm of spreading it. Um, but yeah, have a good day. Check out this video of Cody running.